Greetings, unsettled souls, and welcome to the correct views. Sam I B. Deganji reporting for the Media Speaks. Um, I want to dedicate this show to Nick. There is a 15 year old, yes, he is 15 years old. He gets up in the morning, eats his breakfasts, and listens to the correct views. You know what? I'm 40 years old. My generation is made up of sellouts. People, we are the reason that your bank teller has eyebrow pierced. We're the reasons why your boss has tattoos. Let me give a shout out to uh, Wizard Inc. Tattoo in uh, Louisville, um, who's a work in progress. Um, we, we had the world by the balls, okay? We, we had the whole world, and we gave it back. We are the worst, most pathetic sellouts ever. Generation X is far more of a letdown than any generation since hippies went to yuppies, and I'll stand by that. I hate my generation. We are useless, brainless, spineless sellouts, and I'll shout it from the roof. Well, the generation right behind me is made up of absolute idiots. I've never seen a stupider generation my life. My generation, all they cared about was fucking money. And excuse my French, but I'll stand by it. The generation behind me is just made up of absolute idiots. The generation behind them is looking like there might actually be some hope. Uh, guys, I'm going to go ahead. Uh, I got a lot of hits for the Fukushima news. By the way, if you're a fan of the HD stuff, I'm not going to be posting an HD version of this today because there's a whole issue with the camera and the memory and everything is being switched and juggled. So there is not going to be a high-def version of the show. Uh, Fukushima Diary, dust monitoring alarm went off again. And two workers had their heads contaminated. Now, I don't know how many of you have seen the movie Silkwood, but it should be absolutely mandatory viewing for anybody between the ages of K through 12. You should have to see this movie. Maybe not that young because of uh, uh, some of the uh, lifestyle choices in the movie. But let me say anybody over the age of 12, unless you're somebody that's worried about every single reference to anything that might be a little bit stupid, watch Silkwood. Silkwood is a work of genius, and I mention that because one of the things that happened in the film, and it's a true story, by the way, is that she reports on a gentleman, he's like 18, 21, I don't know, a young guy that gets his head irradiated with this garbage, and the his hair grows in hot. That means there was, uh, in his DNA now, forever radioactivity always never going to go away internally contaminated it happened to him from one exposure well it's happening now here um, now some of the typos on this it's going to sound like I'm reading like I'm drunk or something I'm not uh, when you uh, any like anyone that listens to Hank Hanegraaff will tell you when you take one language and move it into a receptor language sometimes things don't make sense and uh, again, so anything I read that doesn't flow, it's what happens when you translate it into English. Dust monitoring alarm went off at 10.04 a.m. again. It's located in front of the Seismic Isolation Building. It went off 8.12.2013 too. This time the mist was turned off, which proves the contamination source is not the mist. Uh, what he means by that is, for those of you that have watched this show, you already know that uh, uh, people uh, in a, uh, a cooling mist were said to have had it hooked up to a, uh, a source that had radioactivity in it. Well, in light of this, now you kind of have to wonder uh, be, if it wasn't just something that they were saying to cover something up, that something might be that they don't even know what the source is. It was not from the mist. At 10.20 a.m., two workers were found contaminated. They were waiting for the bus in front of the seismic isolation building. Both workers had the top of their heads contaminated. TEPCO reported the highest contamination levels at 13 becquerels per cubic centimeter squared. 
TEPCO wipes the contaminated part to release the workers. Now see, that, that is a common misconception, that you can wash radioactivity away. That is only true if it has not been breathed in, uh, gotten in through a uh, cut, been inhaled, and if it's not a kind of radioactivity that can simply go right through your skin. In other words, there are only certain kinds of radioactivity uh, that you can remove in that regard. So all this washing of the streets and the roofs and all this, it's important, but it's not getting rid of all the forms of radiation. And the fact that they, that they publish that they can send these people home and now they're perfectly okay, they're only perfectly okay from the ones that they could wash away and the radioisotopes that they could remove. The rest of them will be forever contaminating and killing them. Um, and this is one more from Fukushima Diary. I'm doing this because I've gotten uh, like over almost 400 hits now between the two sites, uh, Media Speaks and Correct Views on YouTube, about Fukushima. And I'm glad that I'm reaching people. I've got the greatest compliment that I've ever received. There is a family that is uh, going to be moving from Japan because of information that I gave to them, and that is wonderful. So uh, if you people are listening to me, and then I'm going to go ahead and make sure that I keep giving you guys the facts that you need. TEPCO doesn't analyze groundwater deeper than the 16 meters on the ground. Uh, TEPCO, no reason not to do it. Um, and this is another way of covering up just how bad the disaster is. They don't want to go real deep because they're going to prove then what many people have feared and they have denied in light of all the evidence it seems to imply that the radioactivity has now reached the groundwater of Japan. That could potentially pose health risks for everyone in the Northern Hemisphere. In the press conference of 8-19-2013, TEPCO commented that they don't make an observation hole deeper than 16 meters underground, but they don't have a reason not to make one. Here, I bet they do. In fact, I bet they do. They're trying to hide how bad it is. Having the contamination level or increasing in the Pacific, TEPCO made borings into the seaside of Fukushima nuclear plant area in order to analyze the groundwater. However, they are all shallower than 16 meters. There is an impermeable layer 16 meters deep underground. Also, there is permeable layer underneath. That means there is water that they can get to underneath the part that is harder to get to. The impermeable layer can be damaged due to the quakes and letting the contaminated groundwater seep underground. In other words, they're, they don't, they're not testing to where the, the level is harder. They're saying the ground is so hard the water can't go through. The truth is that a 9.0 earthquake like they suffer very well could break up that impermeable layer. And if that is the case, that's how the groundwater is being contaminated. So in order for that not to uh, come up as relevant, they simply don't test it. That's called dishonesty. In the turbine buildings are directly leaking water, if the turbine buildings are directly leaking water, it is likely to be penetrating under this permeable, impermeable layer. But TEPCO doesn't plan to make borings deep enough, and they don't have any reason not to do it. Well, no reason that they're going to admit. How's that? Um, this is from Politico. Bush daughter Hillary Clinton should run. Now I am doing the Hitlery update here. Hitlery, Shrillery, uh, arguably the worst candidate for president since Barack Obama. Um, in terms of the damage they could do to the country, uh, this woman is a jackal. You simply would have to be an idiot with a pumpkin for a head to vote for Hillary Clinton. Um, well, a lot of people have argued that a pumpkin is in fact much smarter than the head that is on top of George W. Bush. And uh, this could prove it. Bush daughter Hillary should run. Yeah, she should run out of the country and never come back because she's a traitor. Um, this is by Taylor Copen. President George W. Bush's daughter Barbara said she would like to see Hillary Clinton run for the president in 2016. Barbara Bush, 31, called Clinton unbelievably accomplished in an upcoming interview with People Magazine saying she wants to see the former First Lady mount a campaign. I'd like to see her mount something else. 
The former Republican president's daughter said that, that her respect for Clinton won't necessarily mean she sh would vote for the former Secretary of State, however. I don't know who she'd be running against, said Bush, but is politically unaffiliated and supports gay marriage. Um, could this be a ploy just to get Hillary to run because she knows that Hillary is such an awful candidate that even Jeb Bush could beat her? It could be a ploy, but I don't think Chelsea's that. I don't think Barbara's that smart. Bush's comments come up during an interview primarily about her work as the CEO of a nonprofit global health corps. Look, this is obviously an idiot we're talking about. Uh, if Hillary runs, it's going to be the worst thing in the world for the. Uh, the country, but fortunately, I, I, well, I see, I don't know. On one hand, I want to see her run because I don't think that America would support something that dreadful, but looking at the popularity of Obama, who is easily the worst president that the country has ever seen, there might be enough dumb people to vote for Hillary. Um, Hillary's a racial politics, the Wall Street Journal. Hillary is an idiot. Hillary is making the argument that if you want to make sure that somebody is legal to vote, then you are being discriminatory. In other words, what she is saying is, I think African Americans are too stupid to know how to get a license, therefore we need to make special rules for black people because they're stupid. That is what Hillary Clinton believes. That is not what I believe. You don't believe me? Go to the Wall Street Journal, look up Hillary racial politics, of which I will commentarily uh, address now. Hillary Clinton began her 2016 march to the White House last week, and it wasn't a promising debut. How could it have been? The former first lady and senator used to used her first big policy speech since leaving the State Department to portray American election laws as fundamentally racist. You know, because minorities are too stupid to know how to get a license legally. The speech was longer in anecdotes, it says, in statistics, and they're going to fill in the holes. And they did. In 2013, so far, more than 80 bills restricting voter rights have been introduced in 31 states. Mrs. Clinton lied, it says, told her political base of lawyers at the American Bar Association. She portrayed these laws as part of an effort reaching back years to disproportionately impact African American and Latino young voters. And she threw the Supreme Court in as part of the racist conspiracy assailing its recent decision finding the preclearance section of the Voter Rights Act to be unconstitutional. It goes on, and oh my god, it hurts to read what this jackal says. She claimed that the high court had struck at the heart of the law, though it did was eliminate a section that had forced such states as Mississippi to meet higher legal burdens for election laws than other states with a worse current record of minority voter participation. Now every obstacle is related to race. Every obstacle, not, not every obstacle, is related to race, Mrs. Clinton added. But anyone who says that racial discrimination is no longer a problem in American elections has not been paying attention. In other words, she really believes that the act of proving that you are American, an American citizen is something somehow that blacks and Latinos just aren't smart enough to grasp. This woman is an idiot. Um, speaking of idiots, um, this is from Campus Reform. The NAACP attacks Dartmouth students who threw a Crips and Bloods frat party. First of all, many places, many clubs all over the United States have had pimps and hose balls. Am I in favor of it? I could care less. Really, I mean, it doesn't matter. The club I'm at did it once. I hate hip hop. Hip hop and anybody that sings like this, oh baby, baby, that is terrible. I don't care what color you are, that's nothing racist. The NAACP is trying to claim that these people at this fraternity were racist because they threw a Crips and Bloods party. Well, maybe if the black community had enough balls 
to stand up against people that portray this as black people. Maybe if the NAACP realized that their enemy was not white people, but that their enemy was the media that made idiots like Rusher, Usher and Rihanna famous, was in fact the enemy, then maybe this thing wouldn't have happened. If I had the chance, I'm going to go to a Crips and Bloods party just to make the NAACP mad. Call me in, yo. Yo. The Dartmouth College chapter of the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People harshly criticized the Bloods and Crips themed party. Despite apologies from the sorority and fraternity that hosted the event, oh, we're sorry, our gods at the NAACP. We know that you love to create division among the races so that we can't tell that Obama is an idiot. The strongly worded letter penned by the NAACP chapter on campus and signed by the Afro-American Society and the Dartmouth chapter of the Women of Color Collective accuses the mostly white students of hosting a racist event thinly veiled by the South Angeles gangland theme. Maybe they were just raised in public schools and that's what they grew up around like I did. Our peers mingled for hours while dressed in colors of crips while using radicalized language, yeah, like nigga, which every black artist already uses, you bonehead. It then turned into a ghetto party that racialized language, speech, and dress. Over 200 individuals attended this racist classist event. You know what? If anybody throws a uh, party, a crips and blood themes, invite me. Because I'm going to go just to anger the NAACP. I swear to God I am. I am so sick of this race baiting in these idiots. The truth is that they're using instances like this to divide us so that we don't realize that, I, like I wrote in the name of an article on the Media Speaks, we are being hosed. White people and black people need to unite. The white people need to realize that this idiot, moronic, red society, uh, this, this leaving in a trailer, being a redneck, being a damn media, is somehow cool music. We need to get the black people and the fans of that garbage to realize that Rihanna and Usher are nothing more than distractions. Nobody thinks they have any talent unless they're an idiot. We need to get people together that realize that we have good white politicians like Justin Amish, and we have excellent black people in the media today, such as uh, Sir Walter Williams, and realize that it's not a black and white issue. It is a matter of trying to dumb us down enough to believe that it's a black and white issue when it's not. Um, the, the guys, do me a favor. Before I get to the last story, go to the media speech. prepping. Maybe you do believe that uh, the shiznit is about to hit the fan. Well, if you do, let me tell you, did I get somebody joining me? I got a dead. I've been in. Is somebody joining me? Nope. Uh, well, whoever is trying to join me, walk on board. I'm going to continue doing the ad for about a day, but if you have a webcam, start talking and I'll probably be able to hear you. Guys, check this out. Bud K. They've got Gerber Bear Gullis Ultimate Survival Kit, $43.99. The Preforce Combat Survival Tin, $24.99. This is stuff you can use when things go bad. You got a first aid kit? If not, they've got the Elite Number One Survival First Aid Kit for $25.99. We had another advertiser with the Media Speaks, and Bud K is so much better that. You know, and I'm not lying. I actually thought that the last time I was announcing deals with another company, we had something special. 
these guys are just above and beyond. So uh, go to the media speaks, click on by K, and you will not be uh, depressed if you did. Last thing I want to get to, Cruz, who uh, in, in another news recently proved that he was in fact born a dual citizen of Canada and the U.S.